The Donald Trump administration gave lethal defensive aid to Ukraine, javelin missiles to take out Russian tanks. Do you know what? Throughout the Obama administration, I repeatedly pressed President Obama to give lethal aid to Ukraine. I traveled to Ukraine. I went to the Maiden Square in Kiev, and they needed lethal aid. But the Obama administration, they sent teddy bears and MREs. That's exactly. Senator, let me finish my point real quickly, Chuck. Here we go again with Democrat Party activist Chuck Todd, who seems to believe that the truth is something that's approved and released by the Democrat National Committee. This was proven once again in a typically contentious interview with Ted Cruz, where Todd makes more than one dubious claim. Thankfully, Cruz was ready, and he shut down several attempts by Todd to advance several false narratives. One, that Trump's Ukrainian policy somehow emboldens Putin. And two, that Ukraine didn't have any hand in election meddling. Both of which are easily refuted. What the president did with Ukraine somehow was tough on Russia? Or didn't the president, by just introducing all of this delayed aid, play into the hands of Russia? <laughs> the Donald Trump administration gave lethal defensive aid to Ukraine, javelin missiles to take out Russian tanks. Do you know what? Throughout the Obama administration, I repeatedly pressed President Obama to give lethal aid to Ukraine. I traveled to Ukraine. I went to the Maiden Square in Kiev, and they needed lethal aid, but the Obama administration, they sent teddy bears and MREs. This really isn't difficult. Who armed Ukraine and who refused to? President Trump and Republican have armed Ukraine with javelin missiles, which I'm telling you is a total game changer. The introduction of these weapons ensures that Russia won't be advancing any further into Ukrainian territory. On the other hand, Democrats and Obama refused to arm Ukraine and chose to only send them blankets and MREs. Which of these do you think played more into Putin's hands? The answer is obvious and it's another reason why nobody should trust these fake journalists. And just to remind you, Chuck Todd's wife owns a company that receives millions from Democrats. And it's been proven that Chuck Todd pulls punches for Democrats who give his wife millions. Yesterday, House Democrats put out a 55-page report. They called it a scholar scholarly report that, that purports to say you don't have to prove a crime. You don't have to prove a, a law was violated. That is, that's Polka, exactly, Senator. Some, hold, whoa, whoa, let me, let me whoa, finish whoa, my whoa, point whoa, real Senator, quickly, Chuck. That is yeah. exactly why the impeachment... Uh, it was written into the Constitution. And, and you know, it's striking. In, in poker, there's something called a tell. When a player has a really bad hand and they, they, they reveal it, yeah. it's a tell. What we saw last night was a tell from the House Democrats. You, you know, just a few weeks ago, their talking point was bribery, bribery, bribery. They're now admitting they can't prove a crime, they can't prove a law was violated, and here's why. Any president, any administration is justified in investing corruption. Yeah, okay, Todd. The U.S. justice system also says innocent until proven guilty. Democrats can't prove any crime. We're supposedly going to impeach a president for daring to request investigations. Democrats seem to think that investigating Democrat corruption is an impeachable offense. How convenient for them. How the hell did Hunter Biden get that position on the board of that Ukrainian energy company? Not only did the U.S. government already know that company was corrupt, but Hunter Biden already had had multiple drug offenses, he knows nothing about the energy sector, and he doesn't speak Ukrainian. The only thing that he had going for him is that his dad was the vice president of the United States. Yet our supposedly trustworthy media sees nothing wrong with that. And then Joe Biden brags about withholding already congressionally approved aid money unless Ukraine fires the prosecutor that is investigating that very Ukrainian energy company. We're supposed to believe that Biden didn't personally benefit from that? Chuck, let me point out a game that the media is playing. You know, a question that, that you've asked a number of people it, it, is you've, you've said to senators sort of aghast, do you believe that Ukraine and not Russia interfered in the election. Now that, that in, in, in a court of law would be struck as a misleading question. Of course Russia interfered in our election. Here's the game the media is playing. Because Russia interfered, the media pretends nobody else did. Two years ago, there was article after article after article in the mainstream media about Ukrainian interference in the elections. But now, the Democrats have no evidence of a crime, no evidence of violating the law, and so suddenly Ukrainian interference is treated as the media clutches their pearls. Oh my goodness, you can't say that. And, and you're, you're trying well, to make, you're trying to equi 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 equal, make them both seem equal. I don't, I don't understand that. 
These people are just lazy. It's so obvious what they're doing. As Cruz rightly pointed out, there's been reporting on Ukrainian interference going back to 2017. China too, and yet Todd frames it as though Republicans are saying that only Ukraine interfered. As if it's impossible for multiple countries to interfere. Take this CBS News article from 2017. It does its best to spin and downplay Democrat Party efforts to sabotage Trump through Ukraine, but begrudgingly admits that it's interference and that, quote, we don't expect campaigns to behave this way in regards to the DNC and Clinton. Anyway, this is typical subterfuge that the media uses to confuse people and muddy the waters. I understand that you want to dismiss Ukrainian interference because A, they were trying to get Hillary Clinton elected, which is what the vast majority of the media wanted anyway. Bingo. As I pointed out before, 97% of the media's donations went to Hillary Clinton. Not that it wasn't completely obvious who they wanted to win. Acknowledging Ukrainian interference in the election would disarm their narrative that somehow these efforts only benefited Republicans. It's the same reason that they never talk about the fact these Russian efforts also included anti-Trump rallies and anti-Trump ads, and some of which were promoted by CNN. I believe that their ultimate goal here is to delegitimize any election that Republicans win and then give the all clear when Democrats win. If you think about it, it's really just a continuation of what they've been doing since the Bush administration, who they claimed was an illegitimate president. Combined with the increasing censorship of their political opposition, we're well on our way to one party rule. Uh, all right, that's all I can take of Chuck Todd today. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can find all the links in the description and the pinned comment. Thanks.